Hi students, this is reading video number one to go along with our distance English homework packets. If you have the packet, follow along with me while I am reading, listen to my pronunciation, mark any words that you don't know on your story. If you don't have the packet, maybe you're not a part of my distance English class, that's okay. You can still follow along, keep a notebook out, write down any words that you're unsure about, um, and practice that new vocabulary in some sentences. This is the reading, The History of the Census for the Morning Classroom Packet, which is a slightly more difficult level than the story for the Afternoon Classroom Packet. Um, if you are following along with me and you realize that your story does not match what I am reading, you probably have the story to go along with video number two. So close this video, go to reading number two, and follow along there instead. Every 10 years in the United States, the government conducts a population census. Required by the U.S. Constitution, the census was originally intended as a way to determine how many congressional representatives should represent each state. More recently, it has grown into a method of keeping track of population demographics and other social categories. Around the world, most countries conduct a census to collect information on their populations. What they learn helps their government pe meet people's needs and plan for the future. Although the idea of a census is pretty common, the information that turns up is often far from ordinary. In UK, religion inspired by Star Wars. In the United Kingdom, UK, the 2011 population census asked for standard information about people's religions. What was not so standard was the number of people identifying as members of the Jedi religion. More than 170,000 people listed Jedi as their primary religion making it the seventh most popular religion in the United Kingdom. The problem? Jediism is a religion from the fictional Star Wars universe. In fact, so many people self-identified as Jedis that a government commission was asked to rule on whether it was, in fact, an actual religion in the country. The commission ultimately said no to giving Jediism an official status. Countries like Canada and Australia saw a similar trend in self-declared Jedi Knights. It was unclear whether they were merely fans of the movies, showing their devotion, or the true emergence of a new religion. Whatever the case, the response seems to be on the decline in recent years. Method for Processing Census Data When you think of the census, you may picture volunteers and government workers going from door to door and asking questions. But did you know that the U.S. Census was one of the earliest uses of computer technology? After the 1880 census, the U.S. government was struggling to keep up with the data it collected. The country's population was growing faster than ever before and also becoming more complex. And the U.S. Census Office needed a more efficient way to process the information. Searching for new ideas, they set up a contest for the public asking them to design a faster method for processing census data. The winner would be hired to process data for the 1890 census. Herman Hollerith, an engineer and former government employee, took the prize. He came up with a machine system that processed punch cards that had census data coded onto them. The machine would read the holes punched into the cards, and then the data would appear on a series of dials that a clerk would record. Hollerith won the contract, and his machine helped tabulate the 1890 census much faster than before, and under budget. With the success of his machine, Hollerith went on to create the Tabulating Machine Company. It would eventually evolve into the global computer company, International Business Machines, IBM. Today, the U.S. Census serves many purposes. It still collects basic population figures and these numbers are used to assign the proper number of congressional representatives. At the same time, the census is a useful information tool for meeting people's needs and can literally save lives. Natural disasters. 
For example, information about who lives where comes in handy when natural disasters strike. Accurate data about local populations helps federal agencies be better prepared. For instance, census data can alert officials that an area has a large number of Spanish speakers. Such information may help emergency teams better communicate with local people. The U.S. Census Bureau's On the Map online tool offers real-time information, providing emergency organizations with the latest information. Census data is matched up with geographic information to help manage immediate emergency response or create future emergency preparedness plans. Knowing who is where also helps the government account for changes. Following a disaster. Census data can track how people are doing and where they are going after they are evacuated. A country's census produces valuable basic information about its population. It also can provide glimpses into the less measurable parts of people's lives. They may identify cultural trends, as in the Star Wars census trend, or provide needed data for future planning. We may see the census as simply a series of numbers, but the stories those numbers tell can tell us a lot about the country at any given time. How was this story for you? Make sure to ask any questions down in the comments below the video and um, look for the next reading in our distance packet to be posted soon. Bye students.